So I'm going to go to File, New, and start a new document that has to have square ratio. In this case, it's 800 by 800. Here, I've got to make sure that my um, swatches here, the default swatches, the foreground and background swatches are black and white. That's why I tap D on my keyboard. D means default, and it will reset these two colors to black and white. Then I will go to Filter, and I will choose Render, and Fibers inside uh, this uh, menu render, I will find also cloud, difference cloud, lens flare, lighting effects, depending on which version of Photoshop you are using. But most importantly, I find fibers here. I'm going to increase the variance and I'm going to zoom out to make sure that I can see the overview of what I'm generating. My goal is to avoid that one side is darker than the other. You see, if I decrease the variance, for example, the left hand side tends to be darker and the right hand side tends to be brighter. I cannot use that type of uh, variance. I will also change the strength because I don't want to achieve a result too contrasted like this one. I want to make it natural to replace the eyes. And I'm going to increase the variance just a little bit more so I don't know exactly which side is darker and which side is brighter. After that, I'm going to press OK. Once I've done so, I'm going to go back to Filters and I'm going to choose Distort and Polar Coordinates. What Polar Coordinates does, it basically takes the left side of the picture and merge it together with the right side of the picture. So if I zoom out, you see that in rectangular to polar mode, it will create a sphere out of this fiber pattern. I press OK and immediately it will reflect on the iris. Now, I want to make sure that this line disappears, so I'm going to quickly jump into uh, my Healing Brush tool and I will pick this time the Spot Healing Brush. Spot Healing Brush will allow me to simply paint over that line and let Photoshop fix it. Now, the next thing I want to do is to isolate this round shape with a uh, selection. So I will uh, go to my elliptical marquee tool by holding the, the mouse, press and hold the mouse over the rectangular marquee tool. It will show me all the four marquee tools. I will pick the elliptical and I position my mouse more or less in the middle of this uh, uh, pattern that I've uh, created through fibers. And then I will click the mouse and start dragging and at the same time I will be holding shift and alternate or option on my keyboard to make sure that the selection is perfectly circular and it starts from exactly the middle. I will stretch it until almost to the edge of this uh, uh, round uh, shape that I'm designing and I will let my mouse go. Now you see that the selection is all around this shape and I will do Command J or if you want to do it through menu it will be Layer, New and Layer via Copy to isolate this uh, object onto a new layer. So now I can trash my background and this one will be on layer one. I trash the background just by simply selecting it and pressing delete on the keyboard. Next, I'm gonna take again the uh, elliptical marquee tool and do the same thing just by clicking in the middle of the iris and then stretching it wider while holding shift and alternate at the same time. I'm gonna do it about uh, half or maybe one third the size of the entire uh, iris and I'm gonna go to um, selection, select, modify and then feather. I want to soften this last selection that I've just done and I will soften it not very much, just by one pixel. I press OK. Now I can go back to edit and I'm gonna go to fill and from fill I'm gonna choose fill with black. The goal was to simulate the central part of the eye. And I'm going to go to select and remove this selection. I'm almost done, I just need one last step. And this last step is to add a new adjustment layer, hue and saturation, to colorize the eye. New adjustment layer, hue and saturation. And from here, I will be picking um, colorize. There it is. I have to tick colorize to make sure that the color of the iris changes. I will move the hue bar until I find the color that I like. Say green for her eyes, so I'm going to stick to the green uh, area of the hue. I'm gonna uh, decrease the lightness a little bit because I want this color to be applied not only to the dark parts but also to the white parts. If I don't decrease lightness the white part will not change color but I want the white part to change color. I want to be affected by this uh, uh, hue so I have to decrease the lightness and I'm gonna change the uh, saturation just a little bit in negative so maybe uh, about uh, 19 
in this case it depends on what uh, color you're choosing and uh, what uh, uh, lightness you are using and whatever is the picture the target picture that you want to use I'm going to close the property panel I'm going to merge these two layers uh, together in a smart object simply by holding down shift on my keyboard while I select both of them in the layers panel and then I go to filter convert for smart filter so they became a sort of a group but it's a special group that I can move all together and I can edit all together so I'm going to select a layer I'm going to choose duplicate layer I'm not going to make a copy of this layer within this document but I'm going to make a copy of this layer within the other document the picture so I press OK, nothing happened here because all the changes have taken place in the other picture. There it is, I can see it on the top left corner here, I just have to drag it uh, towards the middle of the screen. Now I can uh, decrease the opacity just a little bit to make sure that I align it correctly. So I can go to Edit, Free Transform, and then holding down Shift on my keyboard and alternate at the same time, I can center it to the actual eye. I position it in such a way that it's not too big, not too small, it's just nice, the same size as the original eye, and uh, reposition it accordingly. There you go. Now all I need to do is to add a layer mask to it. At the bottom of our layers panel we have one icon that looks like a washing machine. This uh, washing machine icon is the one that adds a layer mask to our layer which means that now we have the iris on the left hand side as a smart object and we have the layer mask on the right hand side which I can paint using a normal brush. If I paint on this layer mask with the, with the black brush I will be hiding whatever is the content of the layer. So I'm going to choose black as foreground color. Now I've selected my brush. I'm going to make it smaller using a, a close square bracket or alternatively if you are not familiar with this uh, shortcut you can just go through the uh, brush uh, selector here and decrease the size and measure it accordingly every time you decrease it when you find finally the correct size you can paint away whatever is not needed since I'm using a, a layer mask this is what I'm doing I'm gonna hold down alternate just for the sake of the representation hold down alternate and click on the layer mask it shows you that I've just painted a little bit of black on the layer mask and what it does it hides the actual layer that is attached to the layer mask. I'm gonna paint also slightly around the, the eye, like this, like slightly around the iris, in order to reveal just a little bit of the edge of the real eye. Just a little bit more. And there you go. When I'm happy with the um, layer mask uh, shape and size, I'm gonna decrease the opacity furthermore. I can change the blending mode and by changing the blending mode I can choose screen if I want to brighten up and this is my favorite choice when I is uh, about uh, replacing eyes but there are other options that you can explore in particular you can uh, uh, check the family of the lighter blending modes they're considered uh, lighten, screen in particular these two and uh, linear dodge is another good option but in this case I will only work with uh, screen and then I will soften it until I think it blends nicely with the picture now, I can keep playing with the opacity by looking at it from far. If I think it doesn't look very realistic, all I need to do is to come back here to my layers, make sure that I select the layer, not the layer mask, and blur a little bit. Not the layer mask, otherwise I will be blurring the black uh, mask that I've designed there, and I wouldn't blur the iris. So I will select the mask, I will go to filter, I will go to blur, and I will go to Gaussian blur. From Gaussian Blur, I can choose a very small amount, no need to make it too much. I can make perhaps 0 0.5, 0 0.6, anything that just blurred a little bit these um, uh, iris that I've designed. This was the original one, I'm blurring it this much. And when I'm ready, I just press OK. Now I want to repeat the same thing, just by duplicating the layer, I can do Command J. When I do Command J though, I'm duplicating exactly the same layer, including the layer mask, which obviously will not work if I apply it to the other eye, so I have to actually replace that layer mask. All I can do is to alternate click on that mask, find out where I painted before, take again my brush, maybe making it a little bit bigger, um, swap the two color swatches, no more black and white, but white and black, and paint away whatever selection I've done before. And then alternate click to exit the mask. Now I go back to the eye, 
common T to reposition if it, if it needs to be repositioned, in particular since there is a little bit of perspective in this picture, I will need to squeeze the iris just a little bit, and then I can press enter. Now on that layer mask I can just carry on painting with black, removing what is not needed anymore. So I will be painting the same way I've done it before, surrounding the iris and over the eyelash. And maybe here I can soften it up a little bit just by painting back with white. Look at it from far. And that's it. This is the final result. I've managed to change the color from brown to green.